My position on the question was that while having a professional engineering license is important because it is required to call oneself an engineer in Texas, it should not be a requirement for a professor who teaches engineering courses. After obtaining a bachelor's degree, a career in teaching will usually require the equivalent of a doctorate from what most universities hire, which will take about four years. Similarly, a professional engineer must have about four years of additional experience. Although they take the same amount of time, acquiring further knowledge through graduate work is more valuable than work experience in the field for teaching. Because developing a deep theoretical understanding through research, study, and communication with others in the field will allow academics to learn through personal experience is the best way to relay course material and maximize understanding to the students. Now, the argument could be made that a professor should have both a PhD and a PE license. However, the additional time it would take someone to earn a PE is two years, because each post-bachelor's degree can count as one year of experience for the PE license. This is an increase from eight to 10 years, which is a 25% increase in the amount of time they would have to spend. And this extra work will discourage people from becoming professors, as they can have more opportunities in the field with a PE license, unless they really want to teach, and that's few and far between. If a professor did not feel qualified to teach a particular topic, he would always bring in a, a guest lecturer as a professional engineer for the day. This would probably only be required in a detailed graduate design class, as undergraduate classes are not design extensive. And the fact is that no person will be able to optimally teach all the desired skills outlined in the ASE Book of Knowledge, so combinations of talents and credentials will be needed of each faculty member to best meet the student's needs. Uh, there are two ways to earn a professional engineering license after passing the paper test. One is to have four or five years experience in the field. The other is through analyzation of codes such as ACM, ACI, AISC, or IBC. If you analyze them and rewrite them, you can earn your professional engineering license through that route. An argument against allowing professors to teach without engineering licensure is that they do not have enough experience and are going to be unable to properly instruct their students. However, if they earn their professional engineering license through the analyzing like the different codes, then they have not had any field experience, and so by the previous argument, they would be ineligible to teach, even though they do have the license. <coughs> and PE licensure is not the sole means of maintaining a connection with engineering industry. An academic through journals, research grants, conferences, professional, professional organizations, industrial ties, as many avenues that can afford him the opportunity to keep current with evolving standards and practices. He can then bring those into the classroom to enhance the student's education, which makes the licensing requirement unnecessary. Another argument often stated is that if a professor is not licensed as a PE, he's not setting an example to his students and will not encourage them to pursue their professional engineering license. This is not true, however, as more and more universities, like Lamar, require their undergraduate students to take the FE in order to graduate, in order to help like, encourage them to pursue their PE license. And professors will continue to encourage students to pursue the FE as it is in the student's best interest to do so, because it gives them more opportunities in the field, a more broader range of ways they can go with that. <coughs> in conclusion, by no means, does a PE license qualify, or the lack of having one disqualify anyone from teaching? It all depends on how the information is conveyed by the instructor to the students, so they can gain the needed knowledge to safely continue engineering work after they graduate and begin their careers. The best professors are the one that, ones that inspire, challenge, and encourage their students to make the most of their education by maximizing their understanding and knowledge. A professor needs many qualities and credentials to do this for a student, but a PE license 